So tool for this video is something continued from last video. So if you didn't watch the last video, you must go and watch that video before you come here, right? I put a uh, link in this top uh, or and also description. So go and watch that video before you come here, right? So in this video, we are going to talk about load balancing, right? How you can do the load balance. So why I got the load balance through this video? Because the last time when we discussed about the reverse proxy, we little bit discussed about the load balancing and how that goes. Okay. Right. First, why we need the load balancing? Let's say you have a, a service. Let's say you have an employee service or a usual service, right? Employee service. And this service can handle 100 TPS, right? What the TPS mean? Transactions per second. Right, this can handle 100 transactions per second. So now it's fine, it's working well, so no problem. Right, so now there is something came up, let's say COVID or a pandemic or some, some sort of thing came up. Now you need to handle 500 TPS, right? 500 transactions per second. That means we get the high load. So there are two options we can do one is scale up, right. One is a scale up. Scale up me, you can increase the memory, you can increase the processor, you can increase the bandwidth, you can do whatever to do to the server and you can increase the performance. But you always hit a ceiling, right? So let's say the server, let's say let's go with a very primary thing and it, it doesn't work this way, but let's say it's your home machine, right? So you can add new memory, right? You can buy some new RAMs and put into the machine. But Always your motherboard has a limited number of memory slots, right? So after that, you're running out of option. And also your motherboard one slot, that is a maximum capacity that slot can take. So you run out of option. So therefore, scale up always has a limit, right? So the second option is scale out, right? Or we say scale wide. Or we say horizontally scale, right? So that means we scale to this side, which means Instead of increasing the performance of your server, you are buying new server. You are adding more servers to your stack, right? So if you go with uh, our, this example, if you go with our, this example, right? So now what we do is we add more servers, right? So let's say like this. So one, two, three, four, and we add another five server, five servers, right? So now one take hundred TPS and now we have five servers. Now for it all together, we can take 500 TPS. Problem solved. No. Now we know, right? Now you have a tool. Now you have one tool. Let's do this tool, right? The tool we learned in the last video. So now what we do is, we put the reverse proxy here. See, one by one tool we can use, right? So we use the reverse proxy, right? So request come and hit the reverse proxy. Again, reverse proxy is what? It is from the server side. So now you have five servers. Now there has to be a way how this load distribute to these servers, right? The one way is you can think of randomly, right? You generate some number from one to five. Okay, three, send the request to third one, right? Next one, four, fourth one, again three, next one, again three, again three. So you can see this is not very effective. Why? Some servers are overloaded while some servers are don't get any sort of a traffic, right? So therefore, this randomly distributing the load is not an option. It's not, I mean, it is an option, but it's not a good option. So, so therefore, you can use something called round robin, right? Round robin is what? First request go here, one, two, three, four, five. Again, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's a round robin, right? You go, in the every request coming, you go in an order, right? So that is a fair way to do it. But let's say something like this. Let's say, for some reason, this server is a high performance server, right? They can take double the load as other servers. Maybe it has more memory. So for some reason, they're, they're, it's a good server. So there's an option called weighted round robin, right? So weighted round robin. Weighted round robin mean we still do the round robin, but for this guy, we treat specially. We give more traffic to this server, 
right so therefore uh, let one two three three four five something like that oh one two three 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 four five something like that right so in in, in nutshell yeah he get the more load okay and there's other way you can do that is called geo based load balancing geo based load balancing means let's think you are implementing a global uh, solution right so you have a service in asia right and you have a service in europe and you have a service in the us or something like this okay if someone is connecting from sri lanka india bangladesh maldives singapore those countries you can forward the traffic into the asia server right if someone is coming from the sweden france you can go for the europe server right if someone come from the mexico or the us or somewhere you can go to the us server that means you are you are redirecting the traffic based on the uh, the source ip or a source this source person right where the traffic traffic originated geo based load balance that is also possible and the fourth one you can do something is similar like a geo based load balancing you can uh, hash the source ip right you can hash the source ip address and based on the hash value you can decide which servers to reach that is also a possible option then i mean uh, in that case it is not really act as a geo because you don't really see where the origination uh, territory is but instead of that you just randomly hash it remember we discussed this in a kafka video right how the kafka uh, distributed message to each topic is the same principle now now we can do something like this we can mix use these things right you don't have to not necessary to use single round robin technique okay so since uh, see something like this so now you get the client request right so you have a load balancer right this can be a, a reverse proxy or hard dial load balancer doesn't matter what it is right so there are okay i'll tell that too there are two type of load balancers hard dial load balancers and soft dial load balancers hard dial load ba- hard dial load balancers hard dial hard dial load balancers are usually expensive and also limited things we can do with it but if you're doing it something like a layer 3 load balancing based on the ip address or something like that then it will do good performance because it is handling the traffic through the layer 3 right but software load balancers uh, we can do more things we can do more filtering because we can act, we have access to the application layer as well and also uh, it, you can scale the load balancers very easily okay so the, uh, there are two types software and hardware so now what we can do is we take this request right and we load balance we do the round robin load balance Okay, we do the round robin load balance. So let's say this load balancer interface with other load balancer, something like this, right? So this behind this load balancer, you have servers, something like this, right? So let's say this load balancing, this is load balancing based on the geo, right? So this is the Asia traffic. This goes to the Asia server. This is the Europe traffic. It goes to the Europe server. This is the US traffic. It goes to the US server, right? And the US server has a other load balancer, which is the round robin. See, right? You don't you don't have to limit to single load balancing technique or a single load balancer. You can have multiple load balancers. So that's completely okay, and that's a very efficient way to do it too, right? But I have a takeaway question for you. What is that? What if this very first load balancer fail? It's in the days single point of failure, SPOF, right? Single point of failure. What if? Because well, here's the thing: in your infrastructure, you can have a number of load balancers, but the client you should have a single URL to call: api. dot code labs. dot com, api. dot code labs. dot lk, api. dot abc. dot com, something like that, right? So what if that particular, the very first interface load balancer failed, or what if this load balancer is overloaded, right? So load balancer get heavy load, right? Load balancer get heavy load. So load balancer cannot handle it now. Okay. So now you can say, yeah, let's put a two load balancer. But how you can do that with this client? 
how client knows which load balancer to call because client have no idea how many load balancers you have right they should, you have to do a single I, uh, you are at them to call what if that fail single point of failure so you can comment your answers and you can think right just think uh, maybe you can google and you can think and you can find the answer and if you find the right answer just comment below we'll discuss that and i'll see you in the next video with the next tool